So uh, yeah, let's let's look at some some voicings because when you play bosses, your voicings tend to be a bit different to when you play La Pomp. So uh, we look at some of those and also um, yeah, some inversions and something to inspire. I I like to play bosses with a lot of inversions, especially if it's just a guitar duo, where you you sort of have to fill it in a bit more. I like doing these inversions. So for example, I would play. I'll play one one round of uh, for Sephora. I, I I'm gonna go crazy playing as many inversions as I can. Of course, when I play live, I wouldn't play them all in the same place. But it's just now to sh show you as much as I can in the sh shortest amount of after of time. So. Of course, uh, this, this it, it was probably too much, wasn't it? But uh, so we look at some of those, and hopefully they will inspire you to keep practicing this rhythm on on for Sephora. First of all, your your minor chords, uh, as I said in the lesson, you usually want to play them as minor nines. This is your most common one. So you would have your um, e minor would be an E minor nine, and the same goes for bosses for, for uh, bossa novas, right? When we play bossa novas in the strict sense of of the word, you would play you would play all nines. <laughs> So it's, it sounds very good to replicate that when you play it in Gypsy Bossa style. So your E minor ninth would be that with X seven five seven seven X, right? X seven five seven seven X. Then you have your A minor, right? How do you play an A minor ninth when root is on string six? Because that's easy enough to do with root on string five, like we just did, E minor ninth. An A minor ninth would look like this. So it is actually a bit of a stretch, which people like to do like this rather. So the bottom the bottom part of it looks like this. It's an A minor ninth. You've got I'll start uh, naming the frets from from the bottom string. They will be seven five five five, correct? And then you could put your thumb at the top. Another way of doing it would be playing it as the minor seven chord, although it's a bit more of a stretch. And then stretch your pinky all the way to fret seven. This one is difficult to play in case you are already feeling frustrated with it. It's completely normal because it's, it is quite difficult to play. So the beauty about this, though, doing it with the pinky is that you can also then uh, remove it and get. So you've got. What is another inversion for another way of playing A minor? Well, I like playing this. This is an inversion and it's, it's just an A minor triad. It's neither minor seven, minor nine, it's just a regular A minor, but with root on, on the minor third. So we've got eight, X, seven, nine, 10, X. 8 x 7 9 10 x and so see it sounds very good going back and forth from a minor even just a minor 7 
Another very good A minor, there's a lot of open strings though, and this only works with A, a minor, is this. This is a great A minor 9. It's, uh, I, I got this from Birelli by watching Birelli play. So what I'm playing is X, 0, 5, 5, 0, 0. A minor ninth with B, the B or the open B string being your ninth. So again, X zero five five zero zero. And this is a very very nice voicing. See, I'm generally not a big fan of using open strings, but sometimes it does sound really good. So, okay, so we, we've seen three different ways of playing the E minor. So again, you're in, we had the E minor ninth. Something I like doing here also is this. I'm playing this instead of an, of an E minor. This is a G major ninth. So you could do two different things here. You would, of course, substitute the an E minor ninth or E minor seventh or E minor with a G G major. So G major G major ninth is a good one. I play that with X ten nine eleven ten. Right, so one more time. X ten nine eleven ten X. Why does it work instead of an E minor? Well, when we put E at the base, I'm actually playing root minor third, fifth, ninth, and eleventh. Uh, the other option would be a G69. Going from the minor to the uh, relative major. See how it becomes more and more interesting, and you're not really getting in the way of the soloist. But rather, you're creating more texture underneath the soloist, so it, you're going to make it sound better, even. So, see, you've got you could do E minor seven, E minor ninth, and then G major ninth or G six nine. See, perhaps, I'm just giving you a few ideas, no need to learn anything by heart, but then perhaps if you are already there by the G minor 9th, the, the, sorry, the, the G6 9 or G major 9th, when it's, when it's time to go to the E minor, perhaps that inversion will work really well. The inversion I showed you earlier, earlier that 8, X, 7, 9, 10, X. See? Generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, things sound really good. The least you, you move your you have to move your hands to go and play them. In other words, if I had to play G major A minor, like in this case. The, 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 the more common notes between the two voicings, the better it's going to sound. Rather than... 
easy. I'm gonna I'm gonna go as far as possible from the, from my G major all the way down to an open A. That's that really does doesn't doesn't sound very good. It's too much of a of a jump. So. Then I go from that A minor to this A minor here. Next we have a B7 for two bars. Few options here. One option is adding the ninth. And how do we add the ninth? Of course, I'm talking about the flat nine, right? Because when we, when we go from a dominant chord to a minor chord, if it's a minor five one, we generally want to avoid a major ninth there. As again, as a rule of thumb, it doesn't always apply, but most most of the time. What I'm saying is, let's go and play uh, a B a B seven with a flat nine. How do we play that? Well. 7 at the top with a thumb is my root then I'll be skipping one so 7x and then 7 8 7 8 is that diminished shape isn't it and that's what, what the pink is playing here at the bottom is my flat 9 it's a C note it's the flat 9 of B but see, if I went and played a, a major ninth, which is on fret nine, it, that's rather suggesting a major chord after that, not a minor. So if I play a B B ninth and then a minor chord, it doesn't really sound great in my opinion. Rather, you want to. Play that flat nine. Okay, so your B seven you could play it as a as a regular B seven or as a B seven flat nine. But also, I really love this voicing for dominant chords. I've, I think I've showed you before in the past. This is one of my favorite voicings for dominant chords, right? You've got the flat seven here at the bass. So in this case, I would be playing five x four four four, and that's a B seven. Why? A is the flat seven of B, so I'm playing the the flat seven at the bass, and here this bar chord on fret four 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 right on string four three and two it's nothing but this right when you play a, a, a major chord major triad in a shape i'm gonna keep that part of it and, and put the, the flat seven here at the base so then that's five x four 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 and that four 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 you can do it as a bar chord with your index finger. It's a very beautiful voicing and I would really say start using it because you can there are really cool licks that you can you can use it as a lick as well if you play it note by note. This is again I don't want to go off a tangent as usual but or even Anyway, that's a good voicing to have. And I love playing this voice, this voicing in, in a bosta, in, in, in Force 4, for example. See? So. Back to you. 